So exactly when did this news come down from Indiegogo that Alt Hero Q was being pulled from their campaign platform? It was about 3 o'clock yesterday. I got an email from Indiegogo saying that my contribution had been canceled and was being refunded. All right. And to be clear, you were not working on that specific book, but you do do other work for Arcade and Press, correct? Correct. All right. So I was just supporting. I was just supporting the book as a backer, right? It has Has Indiegogo given any indication as to why they pulled this down? I emailed them, and I used my Federalist journalist credentials in conjunction with that question. And I asked. Uh, they said, "Please refer to the terms of service." And I said, okay, well, this, where did it violate the terms of service? And you hear back after that. Okay. Well, that's, that's very helpful. I've emailed them as well, and I've not heard back yet. Um, have you heard from anything from Chuck Dixon on this? Uh, Chuck just says, we will not let them stop us. Now, how high had the campaign gotten at this point? I believe it was like over $100,000, wasn't it? Yeah, I think it was around 103, if I can, if I recall correctly, but it was around there. And this is being published by Vox Day through R. Um uh, Naturally, he's a um, sort of a inflammatory figure to you know understate things. Um, did they say anything about it being his involvement? Because he's not writing the book. That's uh, Chuck Dixon writing it. No, he learned of it being canceled because I sent him an email. And, uh, they they didn't send him an email, they just closed down his account, didn't, didn't say, didn't give him any, uh, any notice or any indication of what was going on. Okay, so when you say they closed down his account, does that mean that it just closed down this one campaign, or are all the Arcaven campaigns closed? It was the, the Arcaven account got closed, yeah. That's even uh, more concerning, because this is no longer one specific project, but it's an entire organization. Um, Correct. Yeah, that's very troubling because if they can do that to, you know, one person, they can start deciding that for political reasons or whatever reasons they can do it to anybody else, especially if they're not being specific about what the violation was. Yeah, and actually I believe Vox did just put up a blog about this, um, which says uh, that they claimed uh, that there was unusual activity, quote, uh, going on with the account, so but they didn't specify what that means. Okay, uh, unusual activity. That's that's a very nice vague catchphrase. Right. Um, right. <laughs> I, I guess Russian bots were donating money to the uh, publication. Right. <laughs> I can confirm a lot of Russian bots. <laughs> well, you know those Russian bots got to read too. They get bored just tweeting the same thing all day long. So, so where does this then place uh, books like Flying Sparks? Was that under the Arcaven label? No, um, Flying Sparks was not. Um, I actually talked to Vox afterwards, and Vox is helping me out by letting me uh, get in on his kind of volume discount for his publishing house in terms of the printing um, and in terms of helping me on the fulfillment end uh, to save me a considerable amount of money uh, but Flying Sparks was all done independently uh, prior to that. Um, my other book, which is up right now, The Ember War, it is actually under Arcade and Comics, and uh, the Indiegogo campaign is run under my account, um, so it'll be interesting to see what happens there. I, I think uh, I'm, I'm actually pretty uh, scared that they might take down my current Indiegogo just because of its association with Arcade and Comics. Right, well, there's also, you know, concern... Um, not to deflect from your personal concerns, because I absolutely get that. Uh, the other concern is that, you know, with so much effort being done to conflate uh, Vox Day and Ethan Van Skyper together, uh, obviously he's got this very huge campaign going, and to have that deplatformed all of a sudden uh, would would make a yeah, splash. Yeah, I, I don't think that matters. I, I, think these, I think these people who would want to do this hate Ethan just as much, or maybe even more, exactly. than they do Vox. So uh, I think there's a very real danger of that, and I think uh, this is frankly a test run to see if there's any reaction and, and if there's any actual like problems or legal ramifications with this uh, so that they can deplatform all of us. The timing of it um, is rather interesting. I mean, not just because Bleeding Cool 
uh, you know, ran an article with Vox Day yesterday and then found out that their balls were owned by somebody else and took it down. Uh, but it's also, today is the last day that Mark Wade can file for a settlement in the um, Richard Meyer lawsuit. So it, it, it almost feels like a distraction. I wouldn't put that past Amy Cool to have put that article up there and gotten everybody riled up yesterday to do this. And it wouldn't surprise me to find out uh, that, you know, people from Bleeding Cool uh, went over and, and tried to harass the campaign and kind of mass flag this. I, I don't know that that's the case, but when Bleeding Cool wrote an article about me in the past, uh, about a year and a half ago, I ended up with a, a whole horde of harassing online trolls who were giving me death threats, uh, just saying nasty things about me, following me around the internet and trying to get me to the platform uh, just from their article on me last year. So I, I know that they manned a hate mob um, that, that goes after conservative creators.